hi so i was studying about pci csi and probably whole brain rt today so basically we know that whole brain rt we give in palliative cases palliative rt to the brain when there when there are uh, multiple uh, multiple brain bony brain lesions as such and uh, there are very big there are more than 3 cm which can be targeted by SRT SRT stereotactic radiotherapy we know that uh, sing, uh, single space occupying region less than 3 cm uh, 1 or 2 only can be targeted but if the brain has multiple lesions and it's larger in size and there is brain edema we give palliative RT to the brain whole whole brain RT the dose usually will be 30 gray in 10 fractions that's uh, what we usually treat but now but apart from whole brain anti that we generally know what is pci and csi pci is prophylactic cranial irradiation and csi is craniospinal irradiation so as the name suggests for both of them so in pci you are giving prophylactically so there is no uh, there is no space occupying lesion in the brain or in the spinal cord or in the csf nothing you are just uh, prophylactically irradiating the cranium so pre prophylactical cranial irradiation only now what is csi csi is like uh, this is not prophylactic so it is like therapeutic so where uh, where um, there is uh, uh, so CSF will be there. Um, so in whole brain RT, we know that there should be a solid lesion in the brain. There should be a solid lesion in the brain, or multiple lesions should be there with, with uh, for which the whole cranium is irradiated. But uh, for uh, craniospinal irradiation, uh, the tumors which spread through CSF, for example, like medulloblastoma, which occupies the posterior fossa most probably, so it spreads through those nodular seeding, uh, gross seeding of the disease, like uh, it spreads through the CSF through the ventricles, and it that's how it spreads. So in those cases, CSI is indicated, or um, um, or uh, uh, places where uh, in ALL or lymphoma where uh, the, uh, when a patient presents with headache or uh, blurring of vision, vomiting, like increased ICT symptoms where uh, the uh, where uh, he, the patient will undergo LP, lumbar puncture and then cytology will show some cells. Uh, then you will send for uh, flow cytometry. It can be positive for malignancy. So in, in CNS positive, like CSF is positive. So CNS malignancy is positive in this. So in those cases where you have to treat the whole cranium and the spinal cord. So this will be CSI, craniospinal irradiation. The usual dose can be 24 gray in 12 fractions or something. So PCI is just like uh, the whole... Uh, 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 brain irradiation now it's like prophylactic so uh, in which conditions like you will give prophylactically for example in ALL cases and uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia or in a small cell lung carcinoma where there is very very high chance of brain metastasis to happen so in that case you will profile like the prophylactically uh, PCI is indicated in those patients so uh, this is like overall general indications where you will use pci csi and whole brain rt so now i'll be telling about some conventional borders of pci like german helmet technique and um, how it is done or something like that so um in pci or uh, csi like in even in csi or if only if you're just treating cranial cranial uh, irradiation um, when would you skip spinal irradiation is like um, um, we have this brain spinal cord right so um, uh, we can uh, these are sanctuary sites right sanctuary sites are the ones like uh, the, uh, like uh, testis and uh, and cns are called sanctuary sites because uh, uh, blast cells cannot infiltrate uh, uh, these so uh, and treat sorry uh, sorry uh, 
in a sense uh, where treatment cannot uh, infiltrate in because of the blood brain barrier or uh, testis brain barrier testis uh, blood testis barrier so testis and cns or sanctuary sites where you cannot uh, give the treatment through systemic therapy so we need cranial irradiation in that case so cranial irradiation so uh, uh, radiation can target the cranial part of it spinal part can be targeted by intrathecal uh, methotrexate so if in case methotrexate cannot be given for the patient intrathecally because of various reason uh, you we can do craniospinal irradiation we can do the whole cranium and the spinal uh, irradiation but if you can give intrathecal methotrexate then the spinal part can be managed by uh, intrathecal methotrexate and the cranium part by the cranial irradiation now uh, for cranial irradiation what will be the conventional borders um, i'll be telling about just a second so um this uh, for cranial irradiation field um, anteriorly um, so superiorly it's the fall off so uh, it uh, so if um, superiorly and anteriorly also it's the fall off fall off over the cranium posteriorly is also the fall off over uh, mm, uh, the cranium but inferiorly is the trick part where it comes so inferiorly you will include the here will be the cribriform plate so cribriform plate and then include the sub um, sorry uh, in, include the temporal fossa subfrontally and then to the level of this is c1 this is c2 so until the level of c1 c2 so inferiorly the border will change so this is uh, called as german helmet technique like if you um, consider um, um, reed's baseline that's that's how reed's baseline will be like uh, superior uh, this will be the border of the uh, orbit then external auditory meatus like a line uh, drawn through that is the reed space line uh, for whole brain RT or PCI so like that's the German helmet uh, you will take um, the upper um, uh, part of the orbital foramen and then EACs and then uh, that's the German helmet technique so um, but uh, the also thing is anteriorly uh, if, apart from this um, follow when you include the cranium you have to uh, try to include the posterior part of the retin retina and the globe of the eye and uh, uh, you can we can also uh, change the collimator angle like this is for conventional right so um, so to properly include the uh, to properly include the uh, uh, globe of the eye and uh, uh, globe of the eye and retina and spare the uh, lens the collimator angle can turn up to uh, uh, 10 or 11 degrees so that the lens are spared and uh, the whole of the globe of the reti retina and the posterior part of the eye globe is included so like uh, yeah so this is the cribriform plate and then this is the uh, temporal fossa and the c2 that's the irradiated being uh, irradiated field and this will be blocked this will be blocked okay so uh, even uh, like when you like this is from the sideways if you uh, doing uh, or you're trying you have to try to cover the posterior part of the uh, uh, globes posterior part of the retina and the optic nerve and this is the whole uh, treatment area for uh, PCI or like yeah cranial fields now we saw the cranial part of it like how to tackle the cranial part of it uh, now um, one second cranial part of it we have done now the spinal part of it like at the uh, at the end of C2 till the S2 like we know that the spinal cord ends at L2 level in um, adults but the dural sac will end at till S2 and uh, depending on the child's age and how it changes you can change the spinal treatment level so a uh, spinal uh, is like superiorly till the junction of the inferior border of the cranial port and inferiorly below the S2 region and laterally the width 
should cover the entire vertebral bodies so entire vertebral bodies in the cervical region in the thoracic region in the lumbar region and uh, in the uh, in the sacral region a spade like uh, port can be uh, used for to include that uh, sacral nerve if uh, uh, if involved so this is how it can look so cranium until uh, c2 we will be involving uh, the prophylactic uh, cranial irradiation and when the spinal port will be from c3 to s2 so that's how like it should include the whole of the vertebral bodies and until the sacral foramen and until s2 that's how uh, it will look uh, but for medullo uh, sorry medulloblastoma cases um the cranial part of it uh, the cranial dose will be around uh, 35 to 40 gray like in 1.5 to 1.8 gray per fraction and then spinal part will be 30 to 35 gray again in 1.5 to 1.8 per gray fraction uh, but uh, we will also need a cranial boost for that you know the posterior fossa boost in medulloblastoma because the that's where it usually um, uh, is located so uh, for the cranial uh, fossa boost the uh, anterior part the anterior uh, boundary will be the posterior clinoid uh, attachment of the tentorium uh, tentorium and the inferior will be the bottom of c1 and uh, superiorly will be the midway between the foramen magnum and the vertex uh, foramen magnum will usually be from there to there so uh, foramen magnum and the uh, vertex it's between the vertex and the foramen magnum in between that and one centimeter uh, you can add to it so that will be the superior border of uh, uh, post uh, po posterior cra cranial boost uh, cranial fossa boost posterior behind will be the uh, calvarium and yeah so that's it so you will try to encompass the cerebellum so uh, yeah basically cranial uh, fossa boost will be just like anteriorly it will be the posterior clinoid uh, process uh, uh, which is the attachment of the territorium and the posteriorly that's the anterior part posteriorly can calvarium and uh, inferiorly is uh, c1 vertebrae and uh, superiorly it's the midway between the vertex and the foramen magnum plus one centimeter that will be the superior border so it will encompass the cerebellum that will be the posterior fossa boost and the posterior fossa which you boost will be around 50 to 55 gray per fraction so if you are uh, using for children less than uh, two or three years then it is 45 to 50 gray per fraction